Got this nice porcelain, no, ceramic ram, Italian made 1940s. I assumed that when you learn you have a painting worth a half a million dollars, you sell it. Here's what I know, they don't. And um, I wish I was a millionaire, but I'm not. <laughs> Hi, I'm David Littlefield. And I'm Kari Anderson. Thanks for tuning in to Vermont Public. During this show, we're going to jump into a metaphorical time machine and take you back to the summer of 2022. That's when Antiques Roadshow came to the Shelburne Museum to film three episodes. Yeah, that's right. Roadshow's been on the air since 1997, and this is the first time they've ever come to Vermont. So you can imagine how excited we all were when they chose to come here. For the next half hour, you'll see interviews with the people who make Roadshow and what the video production looks like, learning a little more about how it all works. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we're also gonna show you some of this awesome Vermont public merchandise we have available for you. Uh, we've got mugs, bags, t-shirts, hats. Maybe some future collector's items in here. Well, only time will tell, Kari. <laughs> I think so. Until then, this is member-supported television. And if you want to make a donation, you can call 800-639-8303 or go to vermontpublic.org slash gifts. We're gonna have a lot of fun with this show, so let's jump right in. The first person you're gonna hear from is Marsha Bemko. She's been the executive producer of Antiques Roadshow for over two decades. She's gonna tell us a little bit about why they chose the Shelburne Museum as their filming location. That's right, and you're also gonna hear from Jill Giles, who's been a Roadshow producer since season three. She's a veteran. And then you'll get a quick word from Alistair Nickel, the appraiser, about his first impressions of Vermont. Well, you know, the Rojo hasn't been to Vermont, but we're from we're Bostonians. GBH in Boston produces it, so most of us have been here many times because this is where you ski and do other fun things. Um, what prompted us to come here? Some someone had told us about Shelburne Museum and that we should take a look at it, and um, we really hadn't heard about it before. So we came up and took a look, and it really was a perfect location for us. It really has the the space that we need, the outdoor space, the indoor space. It's spread out. First of all, we're conducting an event tomorrow where we're going to see several thousand people, and we need room to do appraisals. Most of the people coming aren't going to be taped. They need to have a good experience getting their items evaluated tomorrow. So we need some land, some acreage to spread out over our over 20 categories that we have. So that makes it a perfect venue. And we don't like ugly. So we're not going to go to ugly outdoor venues. <laughs> We want to go to pretty places and share with the nation the places that you're going to discover with us. Um, I haven't been to the Shelburne Museum before this visit, um, and I'm going to guess there are others who are watching who won't have been here, who will come once they see what it has to offer. My name is Alistair Nicholl. I'm an appraiser on Antiques Roadshow. I've been doing it for over 20 years now. I was surprised to learn today this is the first time we've been in Vermont. People could not have been more welcome, welcoming. And we're looking forward to coming back. Really looking forward to coming back. And this is the most beautiful setting we could ask for. So here's hoping the weather stays good. And uh, thanks again to everyone in Vermont for supporting us. I was out in Lake Champlain today. And I'm hoping to see some land, landscapes featuring Lake Champlain. I remember selling some before and they did very well. So there's obviously a big collecting community up here as well. So um, I'm excited to see what turns up tomorrow. It's never what you expect. It really isn't. The strangest things will turn up from all over the world. But it's always some fabulous stories behind it. Getting to meet some of the iconic appraisers and seeing the actual production of Roadshow was a huge draw for folks who were able to attend. We're happy to share just a bit of that experience with you right now. Uh, we are going to show you another clip in just a moment, but before we do, we wanted to show you some of these great new gift items we have. Uh, the shirt, the hat, the bag, the tumbler, the patches, all of this is newly branded with our Vermont Public logo. And when you become a sustainer, making a monthly contribution, we're gonna send you one of these thank you gifts. That's right, we want you to look stylish as you show your support for public media. If you're ready to donate and get one of these thank you gifts, you can go online to vermontpublic.org gifts or call 
639-8303. We're going to have more opportunities to see these gifts up close throughout the show. So for now, let's get back to Roadshow. Uh, one of the things I found most interesting about how Roadshow works is the relationship the appraisers have with the show. Um, so in this clip, you're going to hear Jill Giles talk about her job during filming and the pitching process that the appraisers go through. You'll also hear from Marsha about what sets Antiques Roadshow apart from other antique reality shows. Before I come, I do a lot of site visits and kind of help pick out the locations that we're going to be at, hire the crews, and work on the logistics. On the event day, I get to be one of the producers that selects the items that go on television. So I will be busy running around all day listening to pitches from appraisers about why they think this or item or that item should be um, featured on the, the show. And then I'll talk to the guests and hear their story about wh where they got it and what they want to know about it and then make a decision on how we're going to film it or not. The appraisers, about 75 appraisers, will be assigned here tomorrow. They are also volunteers who are unpaid and pay their own expenses to be here. It actually costs each of them money to be here. Um, I would say collectively, in a season, the appraisers contribute over a million dollars to public television. What sets PBS apart in my genre? We're the first in the antique genre out there. There's others now. I think all of them, I haven't double checked recently, you have to fact check me here, I think all of them deal with transactions, mm. buying and selling. This show is pure information. It is unethical for anybody appraising your items to then make an offer to buy it. It is considered against all code of ethics for an appraiser. This show doesn't do it. And even if you decide you wanted to sell something that was appraised here, most people don't, no matter what it's appraised for, you have to contact our appraisers if you want one of them to do it after we've left town. This is clean. There's none of that that happens anywhere else. That's public television. So there's a couple things going on here. The pitching process that Jill was just talking about I think is really interesting. Um, when an appraiser finds an object and a story they find compelling, they actually call over a roadshow producer like Jill, and the appraiser has to make a pitch to the roadshow producer as to why the story would be valuable to film. And, of course, the appraiser wants to end up on the show because they get that exposure on television, and then the roadshow producer has to decide if it's going to make a good story for TV or not. I also think what Marcia was talking about is really important. I guess I hadn't thought about the fact that you never see transactions on Roadshow. Mm. It's all about educating and sharing stories. Yeah, I know. I love that. And, uh, and like Marcia said, that's public television. And of course, you're watching public television right now. So if you want to be a part of the work we do here, we've got some really excellent thank you gifts uh, that we'd love to send to you. And when you're ready to make a donation, you can call or go online at Vermont Public dot org slash gifts. So first we got our t-shirts. I am wearing the Vermont Public branded shirt. Uh, David is wearing our Brave Little State t-shirt. And Brave Little State, if you don't know, is our people-powered podcast where you get to ask the questions and our journalists will go find the answers. Either of these shirts can be yours when you become a sustaining member, giving at $12 a month. It's a great gift. Uh, also for $12 a month are the tumblers. Um, this is a stainless steel 16 ounce tumbler. It is triple insulated, so that's gonna keep your hot drinks hot for up to three hours and your cold drinks cold for up to nine hours. We also have the classic public media gift, a tote bag. This bag is rugged, it's high quality, and it's made of cotton and recycled plastic water bottles. Very cool. Our logo was printed right here in Colchester, Vermont. We will send you this tote bag when you become a sustaining member, that's a monthly giver, at $10 a month. Mm -hmm. well, there's so many great gifts to talk about yeah. in their card. It's great. Um, we also have this Vermont Public hat. Uh, this is 100% cotton. It's got a leather uh, back strap that's adjustable, so if your head's getting smaller or bigger, it's gonna continue to fit you for a long time. Uh, that logo was also embroidered right here in Colchester, Vermont. So um, if you want this hat, uh, we're going to ask for a $10 a month donation. And last but not least, you know, small and mighty, we have these fantastic little patches. Uh, they can be yours as a gift of $5 a month 
as a sustaining member. Uh, you can sew or iron them onto your backpack or jacket, whichever you like. Um, you can choose either Vermont Public Patch or the Brave Little State Patch for just $5 a month as a sustaining member. And you can make that donation by calling or visiting vermontpublic.org slash gifts. And we should also say, if, if you don't want any of these gifts, that's fine. You can still make a donation to support the shows you love, like Antique Trocha. That's right. And while you're making your donation and thinking about which gift you might like to receive, we're going to jump back to behind the scenes of Antiques Roadshow. This next segment is great. We're going to hear from Marsha about one of her favorite stories from Antiques Roadshow. And uh, while you are watching, be sure to make your donation by visiting us at vermontpublic.org slash gifts. It's so funny, every time somebody asks me, like, what's your favorite appraisal, what's your favorite category, and having done the show for so long, there's just so many favorites, I, it's like, I would say it's like picking a favorite child, but who has, like, millions of children? You know, I have so many stories that I've collected over the years, and I think that if you ask me on the day, like, what was your favorite story of today, I can answer that. <laughs> We were in Boise, and because Antiques Roadshow works with a lot of communications, we bring um, two IT people from GBH in Boston with us. So this particular IT staffer, who was assigned to Boise, one of two, decided to bring his partner with him. Now, we have 100 volunteers stationed over the vastness of the uh, Boise set, which was at the Boise Botanical Gardens. His partner was stationed over at Militaria. So then I'm over at Militaria to hear a story about um, a woman has brought in some special forces patches from her ancestor who was a sniper shooter who shot at a man who was trying to kill General Gavin, who was in charge of the 62nd Airborne. And the volunteer, the one from Boston, who's at Militaria, over 100 volunteers there, standing there and says, he hears 62nd. What? Oh no, wow, General Gavin, that's his grandfather. So he starts to pay attention and he realizes, in fact, what she says is true because her ancestor saved his grandfather. Small world that that happened, and for me that was one an amazing an amazing story. Um, that gave me goosebumps. It gave me goosebumps the second yeah. time hearing it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Wow, wow, that's really cool. Yeah, no, I was sitting there and I just couldn't believe it. It's like, is this really happening? All kinds of fun things happen at a road show, and they will tomorrow. I don't know what will happen. That's the fun part about being a producer here. You don't know what's going to happen. This is a reality show. And whatever happens tomorrow, we're going to share it with you. I brought this elephant that I purchased for my elephant-loving friend. I paid 30 for it, and he said it was worth a lot more. So I found out it's about $650. So it was a pretty good investment. I came today, loved the show, love PBS. To me, it's TV worth watching. Um, it has great programs. It's got great programs. My child watched it growing up. We have the PBS Passport at my house, and it's my daughter and I watch it all the time. It's usually every night. We're watching a different series, so yeah. Big fans. Wow, what a crazy story about that volunteer from Boston. Antiques Roadshow is always full of such interesting stories, but that one really took the cake yeah, for sure me. Yeah, sure did. Make sure you watch the Chevron Museum episodes of Roadshow to hear stories about Vermont. Yeah. Um, we're just going to jump right back into another segment, and we're going to hear from some of the well-known appraisers from Roadshow. Um, some of them are a little difficult to hear over the crowd, but it actually kind of gives you a sense of the hundreds of visitors moving through at any one time, and there actually was like 3,000 people there total over the course of the day. Yeah, what a scene. Yeah. While you're watching this next segment, you can still donate to Vermont Public by calling or going to vermontpublic.org slash gifts. You can choose from this wide array of thank you gifts when you become a sustaining member, and thanks for your donation. <laughs> The 
particularly in the late 19th year. There is about it is. I'm Lark Mason, and we have a gallery in Manhattan and also in Texas. So I love coming to Vermont. And I've seen some terrific items. One of the things I saw today was an 18th century Chinese cloisonne enamel and gilt bronze personal altar set. Now, an altar set is something you'd use for religious ceremonies. But what was unusual about this one is the scale. It was a small scale, which in turn it wasn't for public use, but for private use. That was absolutely terrific, and that's the best thing that I've seen today so far, but there's likely to be more. I am Arlie Salka from Lily and Nassau LLC in New York City, and the most exciting thing I've seen so far today is a wonderful Tiffany Studios coffee lamp. Way back when I first started producing this show, I assumed, like we all would, that when you learn you have a painting worth a half million dollars, you sell it. Here's what I know, they don't. People do not sell the items that they get appraised at Roadshow as a rule. People go home and they insure their item, they may protect it in a different way, but mo much of what we see are inherited objects. And the day you sell it, you can't afford to buy it back. <laughs> Hey everybody, Travis here for the Collectibles Table. We are at the Shelburne Museum. This place is awesome. I mean, we had a slight little scare with some lightning thunder, but that did allow us to get to check out an unbelievable collection of uh, carnival horses, like the carousel horses. To see that many great examples in one setting is totally mind-blowing. But now sun's out, it's absolutely beautiful, and I started off the day strong, saw a really great collection of Pokemon cards, so I'm pumped. Now we just got to see what happens for the rest of the day. But and very happy to be in Vermont because first stop this year, I got to drive being a New Englander myself for the Mass. Couldn't be happier to be in Vermont. <laughs> it's been a very exciting morning here at the Shelburne Museum so far for Antiques Roadshow. Not necessarily for the reasons you might think. Uh, we've already had one lightning storm, uh, and everybody had to take shelter here in the Circus Museum. So it had a very much a real circus atmosphere. The material that's coming in, though, in, in between the rain bursts, uh, is great. We've seen some wonderful posters. We've seen some awesome maps and historical documents. Um, so it's looking like it's going to be a great day. I mean, we're only just getting started. It's, it's funny. Yes, you did hear that correctly at the end. There was a rain and lightning storm in the middle of filming. It was something the Roadshow crew had actually been nervous about the day before because they only have one day to film everything for three episodes. But um, the rain and lightning was really intense, but it only lasted for an hour or so. And um, all the guests either sheltered in buildings or back in their cars. Nobody brought their antique lightning rods. <laughs> Once the storm ended, the Roadshow crew had to work double time to get back on schedule. Tickets for the event have a designated time slot, so the venue doesn't get overwhelmed all at once. But this wasn't their first rodeo, and they soon got everything sorted out. Yeah, they sure did. <laughs> We've got another segment coming right up um, where we're going to hear from Marsha and Jill again. But before we get to that, let's just take another quick look at the thank you gifts we have here uh, on offer today. And I'll just remind you that if you're not interested in a thank you gift, that is completely fine. Every donation made right now goes to fund your favorite shows, like Antiques Roadshow. When you're ready to make that donation, you can either call 800-639-8303 or you can visit vermontpublic.org slash gifts. Yeah. Uh, you, let's start with these two patches. Uh, we have the Brave Little State patch and the Vermont Public patch. They're both die cut, which is a nice high quality way to cut them so they don't fray at the end. Uh, they can either be ironed on or sewn on, whatever your preference is, and you can put them on your backpack or your coat, wherever you like. Uh, if you become a, a sustaining member at just $5 a month, we're going to be really happy to send you one of those patches. Now, for $12 a month, we have stainless steel 16-ounce tumbler. It is triple insulated. It is perfect for hot or cold drinks. If you like that tumbler, please visit vermontpublic.org gifts. 
At the $12 monthly sustaining level, we also have these t-shirts. You can see I'm wearing the Brave Little State t-shirt. And I am wearing the Vermont Public shirt. Looks great. Uh, both these shirts are 100% cotton. They've been printed right here in Colchester. And uh, they're super comfortable. They show the world you care about public media. It's a great gift. And it wouldn't be public media if we didn't have a tote bag for you. These are tote bags that are printed right here in Colchester. They're made of cotton and recycled plastic bottles. You get a great feel, super strong, durable. And if you'd like one of these bags, then please become a sustaining member at $10 a month. The easiest way to do that is by visiting vermontpublic.org slash gifts. Yep, and uh, our final gift on offer today is the Vermont Public hat. Uh, this hat is 100% cotton. It's got an adjustable leather back strap. And again, that logo was embroidered right here in Colchester. Very proud to be supporting local businesses here. When you become a sustaining member at $10 a month, we'd be really happy to send you that hat. Wow, what a great collection of gifts. If you've got your eye on one of these gifts, then now is the time to go online or make that call. Yeah. While you're making your donation, let's get back to the show. We'll uh, hear from Marsha and Jill one more time. I think one of the reasons Antiques Retro is so popular is that it really appeals to every person. That if you're if you're somebody who's into collecting pottery, if you're somebody who's into you know paintings and um, you know sculpture or whatever, or you're just somebody who likes interesting stories, there's these because these segments take place in three to five minutes. If the story can be so compelling to you, and or if not, then wait three minutes and the next story will be. So I think people love it because they can like drop in at any moment and say, oh, this is great. I think it's important to support Vermont Public because there aren't a lot of um, outlets for this type of television. I mean, Antiques Roadshow is really the true reality television program that's really based in, in educating and inspiring folks about our collective history. So when you're looking for something that you can really um, believe in, I think that Antiques Roadshow is one of the, the truest forms of that reality style television. So. Uh, really tells all of our stories, and, and that's what we're all here to talk about. ...was to direct our television, and so you don't want to be an audience. You know, public television is supported by your tax dollars, it's supported by donors, and it's supported by, you hear this on every Antiques Roadshow, viewers like you. We need viewers like you to contribute. Antiques Roadshow would not be here today if we didn't have uh, support from viewers like you. We really put the public in public television. The appraisers are volunteers. So many of the staff working tomorrow will be from Vermont public recruited. But we still need cash. And so does every other production. Um, people who work need to be paid. Those kinds of very realistic things and your contributions, contributions that the public makes, makes a difference, makes a real difference. What Marsha and Jill are talking about is true. PBS occupies a really special place on television. Whether it's kids programming like Sesame Street or Daniel Tiger, or the unbiased news of PBS NewsHour, or the information entertainment combination of Antiques Roadshow, PBS is a trusted channel. For decades, viewers like you have kept PBS thriving with your financial contribution. And we're asking you today to continue your support of Vermont Public. And of course, today is a perfect day to make that show of support because when you do, you will receive one of these amazing thank you gifts. Before the end of our show, let's go through those thank you gifts one more time. And if you haven't donated yet, please take a moment to do that now. You can call or you can visit vermontpublic.org slash Gifts. David, what's your favorite thank you gift we have here? Oh, it's my favorite? Um, I guess my favorite's probably the tote bag. I also have one of these tote bags myself. It's a classic uh, public media gift. Um, I use it all the time. Mine's a little dirty. I gotta run it through the wash, but luckily it's really strong. It's made of cotton and recycled materials. It's gonna hold up great. Uh, and it's yours for a donation of $10 a month. I should probably ask you what your favorite is. Well, thank you for asking, David. My favorite is actually these cute little patches. Yeah. Um, great to keep for yourself, like I did, or you can make an easy gift of it and help share the love of public media and Vermont Public with your friends, neighbors, kids, anyone in special in your life. Mm -hmm. uh, if you'd like one of those patches, please become a sustaining member at just $5 a month. Yeah, and uh, we've also got the t-shirts. 
I've got the Brave Little State shirt. You've got the Vermont Public shirt. You know they look great because you can see us in them. And either shirt's going to be yours when you donate $12 a month uh, as a monthly sustainer. And you can do that by calling. You can also visit vermontpublic.org slash gifts. We've got the uh, Tumblr option for those of you who commute to work or just like to keep your beverage in something very cool and very public media. Uh, maybe you listen to Morning Edition on your way into work, and this Tumblr will keep your favorite beverage hot or cold for hours. And that is yours when you donate $12 a month. And the final gift we have to offer today is the hat. Uh, the hat's very comfortable, it's very durable. Uh, it's got an adjustable leather strap, which always comes in handy. You never know what your head's gonna do on any given day, so just make that adjustment real quick. And uh, that's gonna be yours when you donate just $10 a month. And again, you can make your donation by calling or by visiting vermontpublic.org slash gifts. Every donation that comes in today is going to fund shows you love, shows like Antiques Roadshow that rely on viewers like you on making a financial contribution. This is the model that makes public media so special. It's funded directly by you. We wanna thank you so much for choosing to watch Vermont Public today. We've had a lot of fun showing you some of what happens during an Antiques Roadshow event behind the scenes. And uh, we just wanna thank you for being a member of Vermont Public. Take care. Bye-bye.